Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Clinical Pharmacist podcast. Today, I'm really excited because we're doing something new. Uh, we've actually got a technician joining us today. Uh, we've got Mandeep Baya joining us today. Mandeep has experience in pharmacy for the last eight years. She's worked her way up from retail management to dispensing and up to accuracy checking and then into a primary care role. Uh, welcome, Mandeep. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello, glad to be here. <laughs> Lovely to have you. So some of our audience may not know um, that we not only train and support pharmacists in primary care, but also technicians as well, uh, you being um, one of them. So you've joined us, the CPS team, uh, back in December, I believe. If I could just say, you know, I think you've really flourished in this role and you've done really great. So I, I would love to hear how everything has gone for you since joining us. And um, if we can just start by telling the audience a little bit about yourself, your career progression, and how you ended up in the primary care role. Yeah, so uh, a lot of my pharmacy experience comes from quite a, far, a while back. So I did start out in uh, management, and because we had healthcare counter and healthcare products, um, out of necessity, I learned to dispense and support our dispensing team. And I think from that standpoint, I ended up kind of enjoying that part of the business uh, and doing more pronounced tasks to do with operations in the pharmacy so the next organic process was to go into the technician role so I studied and did a lot of like uh, one-to-one -one work with my tutor at the time and then once I think once I qualified and did more pronounced tasks that kind of escalated from the pharmacist to things like CD balancing and instruction and uh, stock management tasks I went on to doing uh, accuracy checking, which was another kind of step up in terms of progression. So I think once I kind of got the most I could from accuracy checking, because it is doing kind of like the same task on a regular basis, there was a kind of hole there where I thought I could really learn a lot more and enhance my clinical knowledge because you do assimilate cl clinical knowledge in accuracy checking. But I feel like there's real scope to learn a lot more and work more closely with pharmacists, I suppose. So it was kind of like the next step would be doctor's surgery where prescriptions are handled quite regularly and you kind of see the justification behind people's treatment plans. So yeah, yeah, kind of from that, that standpoint. Thank you for that. And how did you actually get into a uh, technician's role in primary care? What was the, you know, the transition for you like? Um, so the transition into kind of the, the primary care role was more... I mean, initially you kind of think, oh, it's it's uh, totally different because you're not dealing with so much the legalities of prescriptions, everything in a community care basis. But I feel, I feel like when you're armed with a really good rapport with patients and understanding of medication, have a good foundation of how medicines work, then to a knowledge and going to primary care is quite like a, a fluid step. You do get supported with a lot of training, so it's not as if you're into that role and you don't get a thorough induction you do get a very thorough induction and I feel like a lot of people find it at, you know knowing systems quite a big barrier but because the training is so and the induction training is so detailed and it gives you real scope to learn and play with the system understand the system it really is quite comfortable to kind of step in and a lot of the teams are quite happy to have technicians in place really so I feel like there's a real appreciation for what you know and your almost like medicine's expertise in like a doctor's surgery environment. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, technicians definitely have a unique skill set um, that can be utilised uh, in the primary care role. So I know it is, you know, still a relatively new role, technicians being in primary care. You know, some technicians themselves may not know um, that, you know, they can expand into this sector. Um, a lot of pharmacists and even some GPs are unaware of you know, what a technician can do in a primary care role. So um, can you tell us a little bit about that? What are the, some of the, the roles and responsibilities um, that a technician can be responsible for in a primary care role? So it, it can be quite diverse and it totally depends on how you develop because the, the beauty of the technician role is you can have quite entry-level tasks and as you develop, you get more pronounced tasks and more complex tasks. So there's a real uh, kind of trust with how you learn and progress. So the, one of the things that I tend to do is supporting SMRs. So we do level one reviews and we flag um, patients or high risk patients for key services. And the other thing is uh, kind of using that sort of level one review to reauthorize prescriptions and issue repeat prescriptions. So you're kind of 
harnessing that skill set in a few different ways clinical letters trying to process them especially discharge summaries because that's quite a heavy workload when a patient comes out of hospital and a lot of things have changed and also things like even actioning mhra alerts which is quite a, a regular piece of work that happens throughout the year and flagging patients that might potentially be affected and contacting them or even just bringing awareness that there is an alert out so there are quite a lot and and it's just not limited just to that there are auditing um, that you can do where you uh, create enhanced reports of patients who meet certain criteria for medication reviews around things like hypertension and um, a cardiovascular risk. It's not just limited to what I'm mentioning. There's so much more. And I'm guessing as the years go on, it will get more and more complex. Yeah, definitely. And I think, as you said, uh, there's a lot of variety and it really does depend on, you know, the scope of the individual technician as well. Um, as you said, there's entry level tasks. And then as you progress and become more competent and acquire more skills and experience, um, you know, there's so much you can do. It really does does vary. And, and there is, um, you know, a lot of variety that you can enjoy in this role. What would you say have been, you know, some of the challenges, if any, working in a primary care role as a technician and how would you overcome them? So I feel like when you're and if you're community based, and a lot of us technicians tend to be community based, you're used to kind of like quite a small knit team and you get used to that seeing the same people every day. But in a kind of PCN environment, there's such a wider team. So you're not just talking about people in your the set practice that you're in. You're talking about all the doctors and clinicians that cover quite a wide connection of, of, of doctor surgery. So it's getting to getting used to a wider team approaching and being open to approaching different levels and different members of staff. So I feel like when you're at a community level, you kind of apprehensively approach doctors about queries with prescriptions. But when you're in practice, it's quite open. It's quite nice to be able to just message a doctor or contact a doctor and say, oh, you know, I've come across this. Can you just help me with it? Or if you've got a query, so they'll feel like It's not just as well doctors, it's your nurses, it's your diabetes specialists, it's your um, healthcare assistants, it's even your wider reception team. So there's so much, but it's just a case of getting to grips with that wider team and um, getting them as well as what their capabilities are. Mm, I see. Okay. Um, And I think when you first started out in the primary care role, um, I believe it was a face-to-face role that you started with. Yeah. And yeah. and then since joining us, uh, you moved into more of a remote um, role. Uh, what's it like going from a face-to-face to a remote role? Um, I, I feel like it's one of those things where it's a, it's an adjustment. I wouldn't say it's a negative adjustment. I would say it's more of like just being a bit more self-assured and approaching people either via messages or emails or phone calls groups where we can readily you know contact each other with a clinical query so I feel like it's just you having to kind of not worry too much and just throw out your questions to the people that you need to contact and if they don't contact you throwing it out to someone else so being a bit more time efficient and not holding back thinking oh you know I'm only a technician I can't can't contact so and so I don't think they'll look at this query it's just a case of being open with whoever is you know the best person to speak to so for us it would be your even your supervisor that's based in practice Uh, we have our own clinical queries group so it's good to you know submit queries on there Um, and if even if it's to do with a practice protocol that you're not sure about there's people that you can message via system one or emails where you can get that that immediate response rather than emailing and waiting for a response to an email or anything like that where you would normally have that in a kind of like a a a face-to-face situation because people are booked out in an appointment you don't know when they're available and you don't want to be disruptive as well so you're conscious of people's time limits yeah and that's a really good point you mentioned there and I agree with everything you said you know that the fact that it's a remote role I think some people might immediately think oh you know if, if you are in a remote role you'll be quite isolated but it is down to you to reach out to those people as you said introduce yourself and get in touch with everyone what's your experience been like do you feel supported in this role what about you know sort of like the team environment sort of feel yeah it's I will say that the one big thing I feel like because there's so much flexibility with the roles a lot of people do do remote working when they are based in PCN as well so 
that you've got that kind of like hybrid mentality to working now because not every doctor's surgery has all the rooms available for every person to have their own individual room. As we know, it's quite congested with patients. There's always clinicians that need to see people face to face constantly. So hybrid working is quite a positive model that a lot of practices have, have undertaken. So everyone is pretty much immediate with messaging and contacting each other or even if it's just an FYI or we've changed a process and an email with a document that's a better way of keeping you aware of processes changing rather than messaging but messaging is so essentially I would say I would message quite regularly every time I'm on shift because there's always something that I come across or a patient I'm not sure of or someone's done some work and I need to delve into a bit more detail as to what the outcome was or, or you know then you can just message that person straight away and you've got an immediate response. Mm, I see. Okay. And just touching back, going back to, you know, the, the as you said, there's a lot of variety uh, for technicians. What has it been like for you? Um, you know, because I think you've progressed quite quickly in your role because you've been quite proactive. I think you've been quite good at, you know, developing new skill sets and putting them into place, uh, put them in, in practice quite quickly as well. So what's that uh, variety been like for you? And, you know, would you say that your confidence has grown with that? Yeah, so I feel like you, as with anything, when you're learning something new or learning to do something new, you start off quite small and then as you develop or you feel like you've got the competence to do more, people can see it in how you approach the workload. And there's always people happy to give you feedback about amending processes. So I feel like because we have that understanding about, you know, giving that feedback to and fro, I would feel like that's helped me develop my practice quite a lot. But also there's so much training available. I feel like that helps with kind of fast tracking your understanding quite a lot so as well as the cpp training we have got such an intensive induction program that i feel like at first i wasn't aware of something or how processes are done and then after a training session i realized oh hold on i thought the auditing was a lot more complex and we didn't undertake as much but after doing some uh, reporting and doing some training around it i was like oh my god why did i make such a big deal about this but it's the case of I feel like one thing that te technicians have to understand is when you learn something, assimilate it in your job as much as you can, because then that helps you to develop a lot quicker. I feel like if you're going into a job and you are getting this training and you feel like it's over your head, just taking the parts that matter to you. And if you feel that that's, you need to know more, then go revisit it and get into the detail of something. So I feel like the training really helps you to understand processes better and get to grips with more complex health conditions and um, even how pharmacists do their reviews and their outcomes so a lot of the lunch and learns I tend to watch them after work because it's only a short half an hour but there's so much information available it really makes you understand what's going on with certain conditions like hypertension HRT which we had quite recently yeah okay so you know I would imagine that you've probably developed quite a lot in terms of you know all the clinical skills and knowledge how would you say you compare now as a technician to back you know a few years ago when you were in community pharmacy and, and looking back how do you feel about the transition now I feel like it's because there's so much training to try and get us into a role it really makes you understand stuff quickly because you're looking at people's records and you're really understanding the clinical decision making behind you know their medicines so I feel like you know, um, even like the blood monitoring and, you know, even the BP being aware and aware of higher level BPs and under 80s and over 80s. It's all these things that we wouldn't have looked at in community and thought anything of, even things that when they flag up certain blood test acronyms on a prescription, you wouldn't have known what those were at community level. And now all those acronyms are like second nature because you use them all the time. And, you know, someone said to me, oh, hematinics due. I wouldn't have even known what hematinics were back then. And now I'm like, oh, it's just your ferritin of folate and everything. <laughs> so it's like, it's just basically uh, elevating that knowledge to a, another level where as you're kind of blinkered in community where you're only looking at the basics of products against a prescription. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, so what advice would you give to a technician who's considering uh, making the transition into a primary care role? I would say that if you're looking to really develop your un clinical understanding, having more responsibility, understanding more from a medical standpoint, I think it's a really good role to be in. And, you know, you don't sometimes realize what you're good at until you're in it. 
and even what conditions. So you might even have family members with certain conditions that you didn't understand much of. And now you know a lot more and you feel like you can really focus in and hone in on certain conditions like diabetes or asthma. So you can really kind of use that skill set in, in practice and even have your own clinics out for you or even review patients specifically with those conditions or run reports on those conditions. So there's a real um, opportunity there for you to develop your knowledge and not stagnate because I feel like when you're in community there's one level of work and you kind of want to underutilize because you in the training of a technician you have got a lot of clinical knowledge but you don't use it as much in community whereas like in practice you are using that knowledge quite readily and every single day so you are on par I would say closer to a pharmacist in terms of clinical knowledge than you are in community so I feel like if you want to embrace learning and developing them and, and there's su such a variety of different things you can do in PCN as a technician and specialize then that is the way forward but I would say be open to learning and be open to developing and um, using feedback as a tool to help you know where you can get better and improve and and harness more knowledge I would say. Thank you that's a really good advice and I think uh, you know, I definitely agree with the fact that it's so rewarding in terms of how you develop in your clinical knowledge as well. You know, even for pharmacists who come into the role six months in, they're at a completely different level. Uh, and as you say, you know, some of the technicians are on par with the pharmacists. And I would say, you know, even a technician six months or one year into the role might have a better understanding of you know, how to undertake certain tasks more than a pharmacist who's just come into the role. So, yeah, I think uh, a technician has so much to offer and can develop so much in this role as well. So really great advice, Mandy. Thank you. Very inspirational as well. <laughs> um, so uh, let's say a pharmacist, you know, is really inspired by your words and advice. Have you got any practical tips of, you know, how they can make that transition into the role? I would say it's, um, I mean, if you're very tech savvy, I feel like it's quite an easy transition, but I feel like if you're working across different practices who have slightly different ways of doing anything, I would say track your feedback you get so that when you set back in the same practice you're aware where you left off maybe because I feel like when you're put into practice and they've not had a technician before they don't quite know how the role works and the way you work develops as you continue to work with them so you kind of need to log that feedback and the same with the pharmacist log what you've done in a practice and how what feedback you've gotten and how you would do something and how those processes work so that when you're back in that practice you've got something to work from um, because it can vary between practices and sometimes it can depend on practice managers how that certain things run so I would say just log your feedback and log your processes so that you're never you don't walk in and you forget where you're at basically mm -hmm. thank you that, that's really good tips and if I can just add to that as well so a technician who is uh, ready to make the transition into a primary care role. So the step one would be obviously, as you said, to make sure you understand the role because sometimes going into a practice, the staff there may not necessarily know how to utilize you. So, um, you know, so definitely have a good understanding of the role. And I would say also to not hesitate to go ahead and, you know, start applying for jobs. Now, as you said, coming into the role, you had, um, you know, a really good induction and you had plenty of training to equip you with, you know, those essential skills and knowledge to be able to start um, carrying out some of those, you know, basic tasks. So I would say as a, as a technician, if you're interested in a primary care role, uh, make sure you understand uh, what the role is, what you're getting yourself into. And I think don't shy away from putting your application in. And as Mandeep said, you will get all the, the training and support needed. I think, you know, with every role, it's just the attitude that willingness to learn because you know, it is a brand new sector. And as long as you're willing to put that effort in and upskill yourself and it's something that you're passionate about, um, you will do really well, just like Mandeep has done. You've really flourished in your role. Um, you've been really proactive and you're even um, helping us with um, further developing training um, to support the technicians that we have and any te future technicians that may join us. So yeah, just keep an eye out for jobs, whether it's on NHS Jobs, Indeed, uh, we also regularly advertise jobs um, on uh, our Clinical Pharmacy Solutions vacancies page. Uh, we've also got um, some training programs that uh, are targeted for technicians as well on our academy. Um, so I'd encourage everyone to have a look at that. Um, and yeah, any uh, last thoughts from you, Mandeep? 
I would say, yeah, don't don't be scared of the idea of going into PCN. Totally, it's you, you've got such a friendly team, whichever play, PCN you walk into. So, um, I would say just kind of bite the bullet and and see how you go. And with every interview that you have, it's always a, an opportunity to develop and uh, improve for the next one. So don't just let one interview hold you back either. Teams are getting bigger now, so there's always going to be them opportunities there for you. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Mandeep. Okay, so. I think we'll wrap up there. Uh, Mandeep, thank you again so much for joining us. You've shared some invaluable tips and advice uh, for any technicians that are listening. And uh, we wish you all the best in your career. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it's our pleasure. Thank you.